Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Off Script with Pastor Jared here with some good friends and a full table today, the Reverend... Oh, gosh. Caleb, Caleb Richardson. Richardson and <laughs> Dylan Patrick. And the right Reverend Jeff Patrick. <laughs> Good to have one of our guests back, uh, a member of Kirby Woods, but also uh, one of the highest viewed uh, off script episodes that we have, uh, Jeff Patrick. And you should check out that episode, ladies and gentlemen, if you haven't uh, done the one where we did the bio and the Memphis Union mission discussion. But back today to help us on a topic that we want to talk about. And uh, that topic in general, is marijuana usage. That's right. So we're just going to discuss weed and marijuana and what is the the Christian response. And mainly, well, the reason I want to talk about this is because it's been about 10 years since uh, the state's who have legalized it began to do so since, uh, I mean, Colorado was one of the big early adopters of it. And I lived in Colorado for a couple of years. So, um, I was kind of there through, through some of that, but I know, uh, I also read another book recently. This is a little off topic, but bear with me and then I'll bring it back on topic. I read a book, um, recently that was about the SBC. It was talking about, um, certain initiatives in the Southern Baptist convention that were done, about 10 years ago, and the book walked through, did they work? And it looked at some of the things that we voted on and did as a convention. And one of the things posed in that book was that often we pass things and we do things, but we rarely look back and judge whether the things we voted on worked or or, uh, any of the initiatives that we applied um, had any success whatsoever. So we're great at starting things and celebrating them, but rarely do we go back and eat the crow if it didn't work out and acknowledge it and own it when we when we flopped or or if something did or didn't flop. So that was already in my mind as like, hey, 10 years is a pretty good time window to look back and decide, did something work or not? It's about that time window now for when weed has become ubiquitous in the culture. It's been um, just a part of normalization for, for most people. And so, um, do you guys remember, um, sort of what are some of the arguments that you remember when circa 2010 through 15, some of these States started legalizing weed and there was a pressure being put on the culture to accept it as regular and normal. Do y'all remember that time? Uh, maybe some some arguments coming from the culture, from politics, uh, and what they were pushing to do. Anybody remember? I remember the opposite, where the police were in my office talking about the dangers and what would happen, and, and from their point of view, how this should not happen. So I don't remember all the, hey, here's why we should do it, but of all the conversations why we should not. Okay. Uh, I remember the, hey, here's why we should being because we want it. Was what I remember. I also remember. It's just we want it. Yeah, that it would help bring down illegal drug trade and that the drug trade and all that going on. That because you made some of it legal doesn't make it stop happening. Right. But the but the argument was if you make something legal that's illegal, you can do two things. Number one, you can kill the black market for it, yep. and the other side is you can tax it and therefore create a revenue stream. Bingo. And that was the promise. That was the big golden promise of marijuana was. Um, Colorado, I remember specifically the promise was that this was going to fund education, that weed money was the money was going to go to the schools. And for the record, I pulled where the money has gone. And I'll read that in a moment. Um, if I can find it in my, my it, sheets, here. it didn't go to the schools, did it? It didn't go to the schools. Uh, all mm. <laughs> yeah, for the record. But, um, yeah, I remember that time. Definitely. Uh, in addition to what you guys have said there. Uh, it's interesting, Jeff, that you you had that other perspective. And and for the record, guys, we brought uh, Mr. Jeff in here today because uh, of his experience at the Memphis Union Mission dealing with this on the ground of actual people who have dealt with uh, drug addiction. And so, uh, you know, our perspective in the office is one thing, uh, but someone who actually has to deal with people who deal with it is another thing. So Jeff's a great perspective to have. But um, I a couple of things on um, just in general. So like to set the stage with some just some facts, um, I checked and it says about 24 states now are legal 
um, weed using states. So you can use adult cannabis in some capacity in 24 states. So we're almost at half, um, yet still federally illegal. Is that correct? Yes. It's still a federally Ill- illegal and uh, still listed as a Schedule One drug. Also cor- uh, correct. Which is crazy because if you look at the Schedule One, so is heroin and crack. But the reason that people look down on it differently is because the term overdose. Like uh, I remember reading something about Biden, why he pushed this so hard was because there was no evidence of essentially overdosing on weed, but like heroin and crack was. And right. So that's they don't view it as a even though it is a Schedule One, they don't view it as a bad one. Mm-hmm. I think you know as you think about some of the arguments, pros and cons over the years that we've heard. I think two things can be true. One, I think it can be a dangerous drug. Mm -hmm. And I think at the same time, there can be um, penalties that are too harsh. So I think it's possible to say maybe a guy shouldn't spend his 20 years in prison for weed. And it's also a dangerous drug that should be illegal. You know, like it doesn't have to be one or the other. I think both of those things can be true. And that was that was a compelling argument to me when people talked about should a guy who smoked weed lose you know, his, basically his family and his life for 20, 30 years. And I would say, no, that does seem a bit excessive Mm -hmm. uh, as a penalty that doesn't match the crime. It's also Uh, annoying that now that it's legal, those guys aren't getting out. That's, that's another thing too. Well, Reggie Bush did get his Heisman back today. So, (laughs) so, you know, if you, that was like, he got in trouble for NIL before NIL was a thing. Mm -hmm. And now it's cool to take money from sponsors. So Anyway, maybe that'll happen. I don't know. Maybe. So a couple of just rando facts um, in this. Support for legal marijuana is at a record high currently at 68%. So we're at 68 support from the population um, of legal marijuana. Um, Support for it breaks down by political affiliation. For Republicans, it's about 50-50. So it's not true to say that Republicans, by and large, are against it. That's not true. It's about 50-50 for Republicans. Uh, independents are about 71, 28, uh, percentage of in favor versus not in favor. That's 99%. And, um, and, uh, Democrats, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Democrats are at uh, 83% in favor and 16% not. So obviously there is a political, uh, divide there, but it's not like Republicans are not also in favor of it. Um, the, a religious service attendance makes somewhat of a difference in your view on it. So across any political party, if you attend a religious service um, regularly, you're still 50, 50, 50 percent say it should be legal. 50 percent say it should be illegal. And if you get complete, if you get less frequent, it goes to about 75, 25. So church attendance or re- religious attendance does affect uh, the, the way you view, but nothing gets below 50, 50. Whether you're political or you're religious, it seems like nothing really cracks down below um, 50-50. So um, a couple of brief things here, and you guys feel free to chime in if you have any any thoughts on anything that I read here. Is just These are just plain facts, like CDC, NIH um, kind of stats. So marijuana is the most commonly used federally illegal drug in the United States. 48.2 million people, or about 18% of Americans, used it at least once. Uh, So fairly common drug. You guys all know people growing up that have used weed. It's pretty common. Yep. Yeah. Um, It's even in like high schools that you think, Oh, these are the nice high schools. They don't, it's everywhere, right? Like it's extremely common. You want to tell the, uh, the joke about (laughs) you smelled it today or (laughs) recently. I went to the doctor and uh, my nurse was taking my temperature and before that, she goes, you know, any drug use? I'm like, no. And she then takes my temperature, and on her fingers, I smell weed. <laughs> it's just kind of awkward to be like, it's still illegal in Tennessee, isn't yeah. it? it? It's hard. Let's just, I mean, it's hard to traverse Memphis without smelling weed, if, depending on where you go, you know. It's yeah, when a- I first moved here, it, it took a while to get used to that just in the store or anywhere. It really could be anywhere. So it's common. All that to say, it's very common no matter where you go. And sometimes, this is a lesson in itself, sometimes the more common something gets, whether it's terrible or not, people's feelings toward it begin to change because if it's common, they assume it's good or that it's not bad. They just the get more numb common to it, it. You get numb to anything that you're around a lot of the time. 
Um, recent research estimated approximately three in 10 Americans who use marijuana have marijuana use disorder. Now that's a CDC term. That just means an addiction uh, to it. Uh, some signs and symptoms uh, include failing to quit using marijuana or giving up important activities with friends and family in favor of using marijuana. So all that means is uh, three out of 10 people who smoke it uh, lay around and that's all they do. They, they have significant effects in their life where there's a trail of, of consequences that follow where they're, lo they're losing productivity. Um, I've even seen some stats that say the, the average IQ drops eight points. Yeah, I saw that. When you use it. So there, there are some effects. Um, this says it, it affects the brain, specifically parts of the brain responsible for memory, learning, attention, decision making, coordination, emotion, and reaction time. Um, children who are in the development stage are very susceptible to the adverse effects of marijuana. It can make your heart beat faster, blood pressure higher, uh, and increase levels of stroke, heart disease, and other vascular disease. Um, it affects uh, driving. People think that, that um, impaired driving is only alcohol. That's not correct. Uh, there is marijuana impaired driving. It can slow your reaction time. <clears throat> Um, it can harm your lungs. Again, people think cigarettes only harms the lungs and they'll say, well, you're just smoking a plant with marijuana. It's like, well, that there is still lung damage that that's, can occur from that's smoking. That's what tobacco is. That, but it's a plant. Yeah. But, <laughs> fair. Fair <laughs> point. Isn't that funny how the, though the argument is mm -hmm. that weed is just a plant and God gave it to us. It's a plant. It's a herb that God gave us. Have you heard that before? Oh, absolutely. All the time. Um, Here's the one cyanide is derived from a plant. Too. Here's the one that I think people don't know because this is new research coming out uh, recently. Marijuana use has been linked to social anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. and recently schizophrenia, yeah. a type of mental illness where people see or hear things that aren't there. Um, so there is a there is a significant relationship, and more research is coming out that mental disorders are being attached to marijuana usage. Again, that's not what people were told when this was legalized in the early 2010s. That information was not being said, so this is new stuff that has come out later. Um, last point on this is that um, the increase of uh, edibles or ingesting it by other ways or making it look like candy for children has had lots of negative effects um, as it's been accidentally ingested or children have gotten a hold of things or, or different, or it's been baked into various products and sold that people didn't know that they were taking it. So anyway, any thoughts on that where you guys feel like the effects are not what was sold to the public after the fact? Well, and Jeff, maybe this is a good time for you to tell us well, what you, you see in, in reality. My first thought was when you was talking about it, put in products, uh, be careful of the brownies when you go to parties because yeah, that's right. <laughs> years ago they used to put them in the brownies and yeah. stuff. So um, I can tell you this, that 23 years down at Memphis Union Mission, the amount of schizophrenia has risen drastically. Uh, we see a lot of. Uh, of people smoking weed coming in you know the, the joke is hey guys a skunk just ran through here did y'all see him and <laughs> you know it, it's just it, it's incredible how bad it smells uh the other thing is this that um what they're doing downtown is they mix it in with their tobacco so most of the guys don't afford to they can't afford to buy a regular uh cigarette so they roll them up and so they put weed in with their cigarettes so if, it's hard to catch them because it smells like a cigarette plus you know right. you smell it but absolutely schizophrenia i mean right before coming here today i was talking to a guy man i'm you know 20 something years old i'm schizophrenic so we've seen that greatly rise what do you think has been uh since you've been there for how many years 20 going on 23 years okay what's been the difference over the years in the way drugs have affected people has there been a decrease an increase have things gotten worse? was there any change around when even though it wasn't legal in tennessee it still it began to be legal in some places what was there any noticeable difference over well, the last decade absolutely uh, when you'd go to get a job if you tested um for weed they wouldn't hire you now the job short people you know we have so many job openings that if you're hot on weed it's not a problem and one of the differences weed stays in your system for about 45 to 60 days while everything else is out within four or five days and so it's incredible how long it stays with you. But if you go these days to uh, get a job and you're hot on weed for most places, it's not really a big issue. Mm -hmm. 
I think one of the things that you see in a lot of uh, more liberal cities, blue cities, was um, because I had remembered seeing this like in Seattle, Portland, cities like that began experimenting with the idea that if we make things legal, then people will stop doing it. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, that didn't happen. Right. Uh, anywhere where it has become legal, it it the usage increased. Um, and people from other places seeking to do it legally came there. So this is a Colorado thing that I remember. Colorado um, legalized it. Well, all of a sudden, they re they had a spike in homelessness because of there was a certain population of homeless that wanted to smoke marijuana freely and openly. Right. So where do you think they're going to go? Where they can do it. So they went there. Um, another thing it, that happened is this is not necessarily related to marijuana, but there's a principle. A lot of blue cities started doing safe injection sites. Yep. Have you heard of these things? Yeah, California did that. So uh, the idea was, well, people are going to are going to do these hard drugs anyway. So let's give them a safe place and, and even let's do a reusable needle program where we give them the needles that are clean and they turn them back in. And um, you can you can go see videos on YouTube right now of what these places look like. And they look like haunted houses. I mean, disturbing the people that are on fentanyl, you know, cur uh, bent over and, and shaking and, and um, you know, looking like they're possessed by things. I mean, just disturbing stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's just all of these things that they've tried, nothing has actually helped people. Zero of it has actually helped people. So um, I, I, I really think um, as we kind of form the Christian position <clears throat> on this, um, I think a lot of Christians may be bought into a lie that it was, this wasn't a a serious thing because it was something God created on the earth. What are, what's, let's go to the Christian angle. What's um, something that you guys have heard maybe to try to persuade that this is okay from a, a biblical, have you heard anything in that? And, and then maybe a response. I mean, it's not mentioned in the Bible. I'm sure people have made that. God didn't say you can't do it. Yeah, and that's never a good argument. That's never <laughs> no, a good they, argument. No, they do hit you with that. Oh, if it's not specifically mentioned, then there's not really ramifications to it. I know <clears throat> working at Huey's uh, at night, that was one of the first questions I got asked of. Since weed is a natural substance, he, he asked, was it in the Garden of Eden? Like, And then man corrupted it. And then, that was a wild thing to walk into. Of Did like, man corrupt it, or was it a part of the fall? No, right. And that, that that was the big thing of like he, he was churched enough to he tried to whittle it a certain mm -hmm. way in our conversation, but you know, you, you gotta go back to what is the purpose most people use weed for? To get high. To escape, right? To to find some way to same way with alcohol. You have these things where I need to get these problems off of me. What do I do? I go to the substance. But we see in scripture it tells us to do the opposite, we're to have sober minds. We're, we're to choose to follow the Lord when we're in these struggles. You know, I, I think of James chapter one, as we did it last night in youth of like, you, you're not double minded, one foot in, one foot out, like having a sober mind. Um, yeah. And right. the way, the way Peter refers to the sober mind is in two, in two ways that one, the devil's a roaring lion prowling. Yep. So how are you going to be ready to, to deal with the temptations in the world if your yeah. mind is clouded? Secondly, in the in the terms of the return of Christ, how can you be ready for the Lord to return? Yeah. And uh, it, the, it's almost like a picture of, you know, Jesus comes back and you're stoned on your couch. You know, you missed it. <laughs> you know? yeah, like those, that's kind of a joke, but not who, really. Like yeah. it's it, you're supposed to have that readiness about the way that you uh, anticipate the coming of Christ. Don't um, be the bride who didn't bring enough oil. Right. The wicks and the oil and the mm -hmm. yeah, the ten maidens. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, so how would you guys counsel someone? You kind of went there, Dylan, but let's push there a little bit more. If someone's in the church and they are in and they're getting into or I've been in marijuana, they've been smoking it, they've and, and maybe they're not convinced um of the position that they should take on it. How would how would you counsel someone that came to you and was really uh struggling with this? Anybody? Well, here in Tennessee, it's pretty easy. We're to obey the laws of the land, and by doing this, you're breaking the law of God. You know, yeah, but it's out. still the law of federal, <clears throat> right? So, and no matter where you are in the world, in the U.S., it's still illegal. 
Yeah. And and so what do you tell them when, if they say, well, be that as it may, I, um, I still don't see a problem with it. How do you lead them in that direction? I think you go back to, to the sober mind. I think that was, yes, that was primarily talking about <clears throat> drunkenness back then because that's what they had, but, but it all goes back to that. And also there's just the, you know, you don't smoke weed to just smoke weed. It's it's mainly there to get high. Let me bounce back on that. No, that's fine. Please I'm, do. I'm a product of the 60s. I'm the <laughs> oldest cat in the room here, okay? Uh, born in 62, grew up in that era when we came out of that. And so I have friends who are born again believers in Jesus Christ that smoke weed. Uh, they don't. They're not part of our church, by the way. Yeah, but, thank you. But, but <laughs> Disclaimer. Anyway, there it is. But, but they they do this like a person would have a glass of wine in the evening to calm <clears> them <throat> down, and, and so they just they're, they're not doing it to get high. They do it to bring them down and calm right. down. And so for them, it, it is just kind of doing things in moderation, which is a crazy thing anyway. But I, I just I've never agreed with them. But I I literally have friends that have done that over the years. And so hmm. and the hard part is is when they have gotten arrested years ago because they were buying weed or something like that. You know, it was an embarrassment on their church. Uh, but in, I do know people that have done that. Yeah. And then the, that doesn't even deal with the whole the whole medical marijuana yep. industry, which is, you know, I, I'm not a doctor and I don't pretend to know things, but sometimes I do feel like things get branded as a, a medical um, kind of like the glass of red wine at night. Like that is not the only way to get your antioxidants. Um, right. Sometimes people say that it's like, well, it's for my heart at night. Well, you know what else helps your heart is uh, eating well and taking a lap after dinner at night around the neighborhood, yeah. you know, like, or, you know, eating, eating fruits and vegetables, eating less cheeseburgers. <laughs> so like, but no, that's not an option. I, I must drink the red wine. Okay. Um, so sometimes I do feel like there's an element of that um, where, you know, it, but Hey, I'm not a doctor, but I do think it's also um, funny that in one of the side effects that you mentioned was social anxiety, which a lot of people claim they they smoke marijuana to calm their anxiety. Yeah, it's like, well, what if what if there are studies that show that marijuana causes anxiety? Now what? And you're telling me you're taking it, you're you're smoking it to help with your anxiety. You're just making it worse. I also saw this crazy Maybe. thing where it was, he brought up the 60s and 70s and weed smoking and it got into the THC aspect of the potency. it. potency? Yeah. It was at a 2% from the 60s to about the 90s. And then from the 90s to roughly 2015, I think, it was 4%. After 2015, it is at a 212% THC. You're seeing it in vapes. You're seeing it in um, edibles and all these things. Of It's 99% that addictive THC part. Well, it with anything when there's an interest, then there and when it becomes legal, you start to get kind of like in the coffee world. You know, remember when people used to not care about coffee at all, yeah. and you know everyone just drank Folgers, Still and, don't and care it wasn't a big coffee. deal. I, I don't remember. I mean, that. older people don't care. They don't get Starbucks. They don't. they don't understand it, and it's strange to them that anyone would pay I don't get Starbucks. money Six like bucks. that. Yeah, that's just strange for old because they just grew up with you. You throw a scoop of Folgers in there, and you're done. Well, in time, uh, coffee began to get a higher quality, more potent. You know, people started talking about where the beans are roasted. There's a culture around marijuana just like that, where it's like, you know, they, they talk about where it's from and this name, you know, this strain, uh, you know, and, and they have all the, the facts and figures. And it's there's farm operations that are more in depth than anybody probably knows. I mean, it's it's an entire industry. And so with that, the strength of it can increase because people care about it now. It's not just something to smoke, you know, that you grow out back. It's, right. it is, it is a big business now. Uh, and there's lots mm -hmm. of money in it. So, you know, I, I never encourage people to take a, a middle ground position on marijuana. I've always been um, against it and, mm -hmm. and, and spoken negatively about it. I don't think there's a Christian path to endorse it. Um, or say that even to say that it's a neutral thing and it's a matter of conscience and make up your own mind. Um, another thing with like, um, cause there's always two levels. It's should I do it myself? And then what should be my opinion on public policy? That's always kind of the second step. And I think Christians are really dumb when it comes to matters of voting and public policy sometimes, um, uh, that we can't, we can't think about what, if something happens in in the part versus what happens in the whole. So it's, you may know one person who is a very 
normal weed smoking guy and he's a buddy and he can, you know, and he isn't trouble to anyone. But what happens in a society when weed becomes normalized? What happens in a large swath of the population when uh, a huge number of young men start getting into it? Um, I've never known anybody who got smarter, sharper and better after they got on weed. Anybody? No. Nope. I know some guys that got dumber and and they just uh, you know you they lacked motivation. Mm-hmm. It seemed like uh everything in life kind of slowed down. Um so I think that you when you vote for things you have to think what would happen if double the people did this? What would what would happen? Um and I would I would shudder to think about if any more of our young men in the world got addicted to weed uh, than they are now. Now, is it their right? That's a different question. Um, I think we can. I think laws are morality um, that you impose upon other people. People say you can't legislate morality. I say that's what a law is, man. That's exactly what a law is. So um, we have to decide whether or not. So it, when it when I vote, uh, I don't vote to support um, weed. I just can't get there. Any think- thoughts on that? I think the whole, what Paul said with though all things are lawful, I will not be ruled by them comes up, you know, just not letting it rule your life. Yeah. Um, even though it, it's out there and you could do it. Yeah. But So let me talk some street talk a little bit about how it's changed. So when I was in high school, it was Acapulco Gold and, and Columbia. It was the two <laughs> major brands. And, Acapulco and they had a, Gold. Yeah, uh, they had kind of a nasty smell, but it just wasn't offensive. And, of course, today we know it smells like a skunk. Tammy and I were riding down Frank Road, and we didn't know if we went past somebody that was smoking weed or if there was actually a skunk, you know, squashed on the side of the road I somewhere. can confirm that was a skunk because I saw it get hit. So <laughs> Okay. <laughs> it, but it, And so I, I've got a friend of mine. I've, well, I've got a lot of friends. You remember Garth Brooks has that song, I've got friends in local. <laughs> well, I've got high friends in places. In other words, I've got – I run with a lot of guys <laughs> that, that, are, that are smoking weed all the time. It's mm. just very natural and everything. And, and so – what um, my friend has told me, he said, Jeff, the worse it smells, the stronger it is. Mm. And, and so, of course, I'm like, why would you put something that smells that bad to your lips? I just, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. And, and it's like, Jeff, because the stronger the smell, the the strong, you know, the, the stronger it is. And so they want that tougher smell. And the thing that's changed also, and, and Dylan hit on it, is the potency of it. Now they're mixing fentanyl and other stuff in with it. And so it's becoming deadly. I will tell you this in the last two months, there's been some dope on the streets of Memphis downtown area that has brought guys in that were absolutely usually not mean, that had been mean, that had been fighting. And I've talked to the cops about it because we've had to handle some of these issues. Something's going on in Memphis right now where I'll call it bad dope. It's all bad, but I mean, it's, it's really changed the habits of guys that's normally been called and i believe a lot of that has to do with what they're mixing it with the fentanyl and stuff hmm so uh it, this particular strain or this combo is is making guys act different something is i we I hadn't you know we hadn't heard what it is yet yeah. there, there's just a, a, a different type of dope out there i don't know if you ever saw a couple years ago where people were getting high and they were literally running their hair, head into glass windows and stuff yeah. like that and they were just going crazy was that like the era of the epsom salt craze uh, the bath uh, salt the, 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 the bath salt uh, craze. Yes. Yes. Like the almost zombie plague and, yeah. and so something's going on in, in downtown memphis where it's gotten a lot more dangerous down there with people that are mixing fentanyl and other stuff with it but yeah. it's just that fact that the worse it smells the better it is Interesting. I remember yeah. around this time too that I don't know if y'all remember it. Spice came out. Yeah, synthetic. It, synthetic spice yeah. that people were going nuts, and there were a few people getting killed. But another crazy thing is, um, I play video games, and Call of Duty right now is promoing to kids weed smoking. Like you can get an operator where it's called a finishing move, where he hits a he takes a hit of a bong and he knocks somebody out with it. Yeah, it is wild how much publicity this is getting. That even to the kids now, it's okay. It's okay to do these things, and they're promoting weed and getting high and all these things. What really bothers me is, um, like, I hate the culture around th- this. It, it's it's a not every culture is good, right? Like, there's this is a bad weed culture is a bad culture, and it it 
Jesus said, you're, you're known by your fruits. Well, the fruits of what this culture produces tends to be, um, I, I hate to say losers, but you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't make you effective. It doesn't make you a sharp person, um, a go-getter, and it, it takes from you. It doesn't help you. It takes from your life. And so it bothers me that everything around this this kind of weed culture is being put out there like it's this wonderful, you know, it's kind of packaged as fun, fun loving, funny, you know, the old Cheech and Chong culture, you know, kind of <laughs> kind of been brought back. I hadn't heard that in a long time, I know, but um, you know, that it just at the same time when kids hearing that Dylan is sad because at the same time kids are addicted to screens and have mm-hmm. extreme depression and anxiety, then you throw weed at them like it's normal and make it seem like you know the goal of your your life is to sit in a dark room playing video games smoking weed um you and know drinking mountain dew you're drinking mountain dew and eating taco bell and just like and stare and making tiktok videos and or whatever and just being addicted to your phone it's like that's no life man that's no life and i hate i hate the fact that that's being pushed on kids something Dr. else when you when whatever age you start using drugs it's like your brain stops developing at that age, mm-hmm. and if you smoke drugs for and do all different types of drugs for twenty years, you've still got the the mind of the kid when you start at fifteen, sixteen years old. Well, that explains a lot, and, and I'm I'm serious about yeah. it. We we've studied that, and and mm-hmm. we see that all the time. The other part, and Dylan and I were talking about this earlier, spiritually wise, is that they're mind altering drugs. And so what happens is I believe we open ourselves up to the demonic world. Mm, and so yep. guys uh, talking about schizophrenia and stuff that come along with drug use, it normally kicks in around age 17 or 18. And and so the, a lot of the information that we've read is that you have a window that if you quit doing drugs, uh, those voices might go away. But if you go past that window, whatever time it is for different people, then the chances are even if you quit using drugs, you'll still be schizophrenic for the rest of your life. Hmm. I, that's such a good point to make because when you hear people talking about experiences they've had while doing drugs, and, and it's often it is harder drugs than marijuana, but um, like you said, now it's all combos of different things. So you hear people reporting their symptoms and what they've seen. It's usually very disturbing things, and they're hearing uh, voices that are not encouraging. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not like they're reciting scripture to them, and the, it's the voice of God. It's usually. Um, what we would call demonic or disturbing or, you know, things that would cause you to um, be f- frightened, very fearful Chuck, yeah. Im- imagery. Um, and that's because I-, I think what you're saying is true. And, and like, we need to be more ready for this. Uh, th- the spiritual uh, wave that's coming, the negative mm-hmm. demonic spiritual wave that comes with paganism, um, because our country is vastly being more pagan. Um, it doesn't just happen without a wave of negative spiritual energy so i think we are going to see that and that drug does open your mind up i i think that's a really smart point that we need to think about i mean acid and speed back in the 60s did the same thing they they did it to not necessarily get high but open their mind up to the spirit realm and it was very spiritual i have literally this is crazy i have talked to probably hundreds i know dozens but maybe hundreds of guys that hear voices Okay. Right. Now, I'm not saying everybody down there does, but a lot have. And I've asked them, hey, these voices, uh, did they ever tell you, hey, man, you're cool and all the chicks dig you? <laughs> you right. know, man, well, you're real. No, it's always something bad. It's yeah. always that you're no good. Mm-hmm. You need to hurt someone. There's never, ever once a positive thing unless it's, man, you are God. You are a God. And, you know, and it carries it to the farthest, the farthest realm. But it's usually something very negative, never anything positive or good. You, usually you got guys that are hearing things like, hey, uh, you need to your arm shouldn't be there. You should go cut your arm off or there's spiders in the, there's spiders on your skin, scratch them off. And then you're scratching holes in your skin. I mean, just it's, it's never positive. Right. And the things they see are always, if, if you were to draw them would, would scare people of what they're, of what they're seeing. Have you, it's like, like there's that, spiders on me now. The yeah, movie, sorry. what was it? Bird box. Have you seen the that? blind one? Yeah. Where like, you can't look at the monster, yeah, but yeah, yeah. when the people who do, they're drawing it. That's what I imagine. It's like the things and the people they see, Mm-hmm. It's like that, but going back to pastorally, um, I I do think like you know Paul talks about like we're to have control 
of our body. And you you listed all the statistics of like it numbs your reaction time, all these things. Like in a sense, you're out of control, you know. And I think pastorally, we also have to think about like we cannot, in good faith, tell people weed is okay because we're saying essentially it's okay to be out of control. Like in First Corinthians, Paul he says, "I dis- I discipline my body and keep it under control." Lest after preaching to others, I myself may be disqualified. Mm-hmm. It, you're telling people, hey, like it's okay to do these things, and we're in a sense saying it's okay to give into these. Yeah, I will not be dominated <clears throat> by anything. Yeah, that that has to be our mindset. In self control, we need to reclaim the concept of self control as a Christian virtue. Mm-hmm. Um, that that when to be under control, to be Christ controlled, is to be self controlled. Um, so yeah. so anyway. Uh, Let's kind of start to wrap here, um, thinking about the 10, 10 years out. Um, what? How would you sort of wrap up the? It's been ten years. How's it been? Not good. Uh, how? How's the? How would you describe to a person if you could go get a time machine and go back ten years ago when it's being legalized and say, "Hey, I'm from the future from ten years from now." Um, what do you think they're telling you is wrong? <laughs> well, like, they I came like, out with it. They said, "Oh, this is way worse than we thought." Yeah. Look at Memphis in the last 10 years. I guarantee you all these young guys that they're arresting and that's doing all that they're smoking weed. I guarantee you, there's no doubt of it in my mind. Why? Because almost all of them do that. And, and, and I'm talking about the criminals and stuff like that. And so Memphis is a much dangerous place because of what's taking place. And so drug it leads to, hey, man, I can do these things. It gives them a, a false confidence and they just go out. And so, and y'all, we didn't really talk about it, but marijuana is a gateway to different drugs. Yeah, my uh, my youth pastor, my youth, uh, one of the youth leaders at my when I was growing up, he was a uh, a jailer, and like he was like, this is how so many of the criminals here started. But that's what they just started smoking weed, and then they kept going for something else. The argument, though, ten, ten years ago, ten yeah. years ago, was that you're a moron if you say it's a gateway drug. It's you're, not addictive. You're, 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 a, you're akin to Nancy Reagan with a dare shirt <laughs> on you read? in the '90s, saying just say no to drugs, and you're and you should be made fun of because you think it's a gateway drug. Can you read the? But uh, you're saying it absolutely, yeah, is. absolutely, it is the weed syndrome thing that the CDC came out that basically said it's addictive. Is that uh that says oh wait this is addictive maybe we shouldn't oh it's absolutely addictive. yeah it's it's, it's, I mean, it's, it's a already... different word because they don't want to say that it's addictive yeah yeah well I mean it it's um already been proven that three in ten the number was three in ten um, are under severe addiction to where it affects their life and they can't get up and go have a normal life right I mean that's three in ten users um, if you go back to um, a statement made years ago. Uh, it th- this was a a, a pro. Um, Den it was in the city of Denver. They're talking about um, how successful the last ten years have been, and what they're saying is so funny when you comport it to reality. So it says, um, when we think about our mindset ten years ago, there was a lot of fear and uncertainty. And we can say now, 10 years later, we did the right thing. There were some fears and increases in youth usage, increases in crime, and none of those predictions have been true. So I think we have a lot to be proud of. Mm. They, this, uh, this was recent? They just said that. <laughs> but there have been increases in crime. <laughs> and all of and there have been increases in youth uh, usage. And there was a, yeah. So what are they saying? It's a complete lie, <clears throat> that, that what they're saying. Um even to go back, I, I mentioned that I was going to mention the money element okay. uh, because I remember specifically in Colorado, the promise was that th- we're going to fund schools through this. Schools, teachers are going to get raises, facilities are going to get uh, cleaned up, and additions are going to be put on schools, and we're going to, you know, put fences around every school, and it's going to be all this stuff. Well, um, here's this is according to Nine News out of Denver. It says the first legal marijuana sale was made on January first, twenty fourteen. Denver didn't know it then, but this was the beginning of a rush of green, both in gold and dollars and in weed. Half a billion dollars later, wow. cannabis taxes have changed Colorado. The biggest percentage, here it is, here's the breakdown. The biggest percentage is allocated for homelessness and housing. Wasn't homeless brought in because they wanted to smoke weed? See, that's an interesting thought. They created thought, isn't a, their own problem that they then funded to fix. So, so most of the weed tax is to fund homelessness now i don't know do you know what they would mean by that when when a city says 
homelessness and housing, what that means? Well, think about the cities where it's been made legal. I mean, they're full of tent cities everywhere, so are they buying them tents and sleeping bags? I right. don't know. Right. What does that mean? Are they building other... Are they building shelters? Uh, well, most of your shelters are Christian-based, and they're not getting any government money, so it's not going there. Okay. It says nearly $9 million this year will go towards affordable housing in a city that's becoming increasingly unaffordable. $8 million is put towards operating the homeless shelter on 48th Street. Hmm. The rest is split up between marijuana regulation and education, along with small business investment and money put toward the city's general fund. Education was the third lowest on that list. Marijuana education. Oh, it was marijuana <laughs> education. It wasn't just <laughs> at oh, all. Gosh. Right. So that's just to show um, don't don't be foolish out there when people tell you all the wonderful things that a sin tax is going to do. We used to call this a sin tax uh, when you not S Y N T A X in grammar, but S I N tax uh, when they would put additional taxes on alcohol and cigarettes um, all the promises and, and also that's kind of immoral isn't it uh, to it's kind of like um, casinos like all the wonderful things we do with gambling money that's mostly taken from poor people uh, and you know lottery money we can well we can look at all the wonderful things we do with our education like yeah but all, well, look at all the bad things that have happened when people throw their money in a pit so Maybe that needs to be mentioned too. Um, and most, uh, most, if you pay taxes, you know that most taxes that support education come from your property taxes. That's where most of the school's money comes from is your property taxes. So the idea that we were somehow going to legalize weed and all the teachers were going to get a raise, um, if you believe that, what do they say? You got some oceanfront property in Arizona that you can that you can get. <laughs> throw, throw the Golden Gate in too. Yeah. So so anyway, um, in retrospect, we'll close here. In retrospect, ten years out, can you say anything positive? No. no. Mm-hmm. I'd say quite the opposite. You say a lot of negatives. So if you had a button in front of you, would anybody here? If there was a a, a button here to make weed illegal, how many of y'all are pushing that button? In uh, nationwide, all states, it is illegal nationwide. Well, statewide in every state. (laughs) I'd hit it. You push the button. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I'd push the button too. Okay. Well, hopefully, y'all enjoyed this episode. Uh, We're talking about uh, about ten years out, weed, um, marijuana usage in uh, the United States. So think about it, guys. uh, When this next. This comes up in election years. It comes up as a a political talking point every once in a while. And uh, Christians are often kind of caught in the middle of, well, you know, how do we how do we think about this? Uh, We want to be people of liberty and let people make their own decisions. But we also don't want people to get addicted to drugs. And so um, my position, our position here at the table is uh, that we would not support the legalization of marijuana. And so uh, something to think about, something to pray about, something to study and search the scriptures on. So I hope you guys have a wonderful week. Uh, if you need, if you want to submit an episode for us to do, go to kirbywoods.org slash off script. And um, we'd love to, love to hear from you. So thanks a lot, guys. Enjoy your week. God bless. Mm-hmm.